I learned my lesson yesterday. The cart is coming with me. If you've watched any of my vlogs, you know my modus operandi is efficiency. That is what every decision is based off of. How can I make things easier, waste less time? It does have an element of being lazy. And how do I make this task flow as easy as possible? But that is the precursor for this 28 to 135 ENG kit lens. I want something that can just cover everything. I don't like switching lenses. I love zooms for the versatility, the practicality, and I rented it out of my own pocket for this conference job. So that is just a fee that I am taking on myself so that I can get the data from using this lens figuring out is this really the the all-in-one answer for me someone who is trying to find a perfect lens like i said in my last vlog it's impressive and infuriating let me show you one of the things that is the most annoying so when you are in um servo zoom and i zoom in i can either do it here here or the handle which is great the issue is when you switch it out to manual it zooms out that could be a huge issue if you were live on a shot the other issue is autofocus so right now i am focused on this knob and then if i turn it to auto it's going here so now it's let me say I, I touch tracked that, right? So that's what I wanted to, to stay locked on. When I switch it just into manual focus, it focuses back to the previous point that it was at during manual focus. That's a huge issue because when I use my 24 to 70 GM Mark II, I will frequently be focusing manually, switching uh, it to autofocus, then turning it off, and then adjusting it and switching it back on, and it doesn't change it when I go from autofocus to manual focus. And that is a big limitation. All right, for this shot, I'm gonna have our host go up to the second level. Uh, I'm gonna start the camera here, tilt up, he's gonna deliver his line. I'm gonna be shooting back here, um, just, just doing a tilt, no, servo zoom action well actually i might punch in a little bit as he gets up i ended up using the servo function because it was applicable to this shot and i love that i can choose to use it or not use it my 24 to 70 is great it would be fantastic if it was a 24 to 105 with servo i would take that trade-off i'm trying to figure out the fastest ways to deploy when we're going down the conference hall seeing something that we need to film or do a stand up i can just pull the tripod off the hook open either throw it on the tripod or throw it on the shoulder and i was having to disassemble this light pull the stand away from the light but now i can just lay it across here it'll still balance it's not not gonna fall and that's the fastest formula I found so far, but I have a feeling it's gonna keep changing. And I also realized that I can just mix the four channels of audio. So one, two, three, four, I was having to switch uh, the monitoring channels between one and two and three and four whenever we switch mics, but now I can just do a mix and I can hear any of the mics that are on super loud in here but this is the receiver for the stick mic right here this is a transmitter receiver duo um, every time we finish i have to turn this off and turn this off they have really weird batteries i wish they just took double a's but it's this bottom compartment is a battery and then this pulls out and that's a battery I don't know. I, I don't like the system. I love how the Sony system just gets phantom power through the hot shoe. Um, and I don't have to worry about batteries at all. There is a battery sled in here, but this can work fine without it. 
but this system is doing good. We had a little bit of RF hits earlier in the morning, but just got lucky after that, I guess. This production company has two crews on site. I'm part of the daily recap video, but they also have this studio team. And I found out my buddy Tristan was gonna be here. You might recognize him from some older vlogs. He doesn't normally do corporate work, so it's always fun when we're on the same gig. Okay. Now I'm making the vlog. Yep. The only issue with the cart is I need to find elevators, but if I had to carry all this gear myself, I would, my body would be devastated. Now I've had some time working with this, so I'm actually considering what if I started stripping things down? What if I keep the shoulder pad, but switch back to my 24 to 70 and actually get rid of this whole monitor system and then go back to this? Um, it goes against everything that I've been building the past year or two. And I only have one Sony battery, so I can't do this for this long, but we only have half a day left um, today. So maybe this is the perfect time to test it out. Man, just taking the 28 to 135 off and the VCT, and it looks like a skeleton, which seems so much easier to manage. But just have to balance my shoulder right here. And you know, not having to be in the second base ISO because I have 2.8 is just really really nice basically anywhere I'm indoors with the 28 to 135 I basically have to go into the high base of 12,800 which is I straight up just got embarrassed when my coworker came out and I was mid vlog so had to bail but 2.8 is just really nice now the cart is absolutely crucial because we are going to another concourse that is about two blocks away and i just wouldn't be able to hang if i had to carry all this gear myself uh this is the recap video what they call headlines so that's from yesterday and it is being shown today so the editor chopped it up last night and then they burned a bunch of dvds sent look at that servo they sent it to different hotels. It's playing in the bus shuttles. It's playing on these monitors throughout the convention center. So it's really cool because as someone who rarely gets to see their work, finally I get to like see it the day after. My bumper is damaged. So now we're switching to the two lobs. So that's one. Here's the other. All I got to do on here is make sure these are on, 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 and then I'll have level. I do wish that a lot of these receivers were facing this way because if it's on your shoulder or on a tripod, sometimes it's like really hard to see this display. It would be better if it was like facing this way. And, I, and there's a new mic from Sure that's basically the same as the GoTo's or the DJI mics, and they have that design where the front display facing this way i think it's nice it does raise the vertical height a bit now that i'm on the 24 to 70 i have a more limited focal range so i can't get as tight as i was able to earlier in the day so the only workaround is to crop into super 35 and this is a 1080p day i wish all days were 1080p so i um can go into super 35 or i could use clear image zoom So my overall impressions of the Sony kit lens, the 28 to 135 f4 is it's very practical, but personally, it's just a little too heavy. It's a little too long for my FX6 build. And I think I can live with the limitations of the 24 to 70 and live with the benefits of having more light coming through um, just trying to manually zoom the lens when needed to and I'm just really glad that I can rent this lens and make my decision instead of pay around three thousand dollars and then make my decision so I'm a big proponent for renting i don't do it often but this was a perfect use case and i don't have the guilt of spending hard-earned money 
I love my consultation calls because I can really get into the weeds for the situation of one particular person, but I wanna do a more interactive segment. So starting now, you can DM me a video on Instagram and I can respond directly. Here's the first one. Yo, what's up, David? Love the vlogs. My question for you is how do you maintain good client relationship? What do you do beforehand, during the shoot and after the shoot that feels more personal and it doesn't feel like just a business transaction between you and the client you're working with? I definitely think that's an under-prioritized area. Most of us are just trying to make sure that we can deliver on what we promised. But I like how you broke it up into before, during, and after. So before, I, when I'm on a discovery call, I always ask, what are the hurdles that you've had in the past with freelancers? It usually catches them off guard, and they give me insight that I can apply once on the production. But I'm setting the tone whatever your success is, that's my success. Once we're on set, um, I'm always trying to put myself in their shoes because they have way more risk than I do. If everything goes wrong, I lose on a, on a grand or a couple grand. They lose out on months of planning, effort, resources, everything. So whenever, I'm, they, whenever they have a hurdle, I try to meet it with understanding and not contradiction. So what that looks like is if something, if the, a problem comes up, I try to just give them a risk versus reward. So I say, we are either increasing or decreasing our chance of success by doing this. And these are the, this is what we're gonna risk if we implement that. Whatever they say is what we're gonna go with. But I am trying to interject my experience, my expertise, and just let them know, again, you and I are on the same team. And then once the shoot finishes, I don't send like a thank you card or anything like that, but if we do meet again on another shoot, I instantly, right when we meet, I try to bring up something that they mentioned in the past about their lifestyle or something personal to them. Again, just to set the tone of, we are business partners, but we can also talk like this. And most of the time, showing that I'm invested in their end product is a reflection on my personality. And that's how I get that, that personal connection with them. So I like this type of interaction with the phone and you guys calling in and asking me questions. Of course, if you want to do a consultation call, we can. But this tripod's heavy. But... If you have a bite-sized question, DM me the video on Instagram because I'm gonna make this a recurring segment. Thank you for the call, Jared.